Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at a pretty large Backman tank engine. The V3 is quite a chunky LNER tank engine and I've actually owned one of these models for quite a number of years but it is quite an old model, the level of detail is quite basic and it runs on an old split chassis mechanism which isn't the best and it means of course that I'm spending more of my time gluing the failing axles together than I am enjoying the locomotive. But Backman still produce the V3, or they have up until recently. For instance, this V3 was last in the catalogue in 2020, which means it is reasonably modern. Now, I don't know very much about this model at the moment. I do know that it had an RRP of £129.95, something like that. And it was sold, well, it's been sold at all sorts of different prices. 90 to 95 pounds is about the going rate at the moment from the retailers, maybe up to 100, some sell higher, obviously, at RRPs. But clearly, in 2020, Backman were not going to be selling an old split chassis locomotive. Uh, for instance, it does say on the box that this is DCC ready, so probably not still going to be split chassis. So, in other words, Backman must have redesigned the chassis for this, which is very good stuff because previously a beautiful looking loco was spoilt by the poor mechanism. Well, if Backman have redesigned it, then this is a locomotive I should be interested in. So, whether or not they did a good job with this mechanism, I have no idea. It's still in the box. I haven't got this out yet. But today we're going to take a look at the Loco, see whether the level of detail is any higher on a more modern version, and more importantly, see what the mechanism is like. Let's see if it can improve on the old model in terms of performance, and let's see what the quality of it is like as well. So this should be fun. Let's take it out, the Backman V3. So the front of the box says that this is a V1 slash V3, and I will tell you later on what the differences between the two classes are. But it begs the question, what model have we got inside the box? Is it a V1 or a V3? Well, as far as I can tell, most of the V1 locomotives were rebuilt into V3s before nationalisation. And since this locomotive is in a very handsome BR black livery, I would guess that that makes this a V3 locomotive, but that would just be my guess. Let me show you the end of the box. So the product number for mine is 31-615. It's a class V, oh, it is, it is a class V3, so all of my speculation was useless. Uh, tank number 67690. It is in the BR lined black. Yeah, we've got some really nice lining on this, fingers crossed, with the early emblem, which is quite nice. And yes, indeed, this is an 18-pin DCC ready locomotive. So, yeah. It's definitely more modern, at least to some degree, than the V3 that I've already got. And then if you're interested in the history of the class, I'll flip the box over and there is the brief history from Backman there. As always, if you want to pause and read that, you absolutely can do, but I will also give you some more info on them a bit later on. Okay, I'm really, really interested to find out what this is like. The old V3 from Backman was a very heavy model and this box does feel pretty darn weighty given the size of this thing. So yeah, let's end my suffering and pull this out. Oh, suffering, honestly, what am I like? Okay, so there it is, and for sure, there is some lovely red lining on this, which I think is going to look amazing once it's out. I think the LNER green that I've had in the past is going to take some beating, but then it's, again, it's not a modern loco, it's not done to the high standard that the modern Backman stuff is. So this paperwork might give some clue as to what the updated chassis is like. So it shows you the accessories, where to fit them, it seems to be largely buffer beam and cylinder drain cock accessories and such. Lubrication points, can't tell whether there's any proper bearings, hopefully there is, that's a quality feature for 130 quid. All right, here we go then. You can see not much, but a little bit of what the mechanism involves. You've got a can motor, not sure whether that's gonna be three or five pole yet. This is a slightly better look on the, at the chassis over on the right hand side. Yeah, that ain't no split chassis, which is very good to see. And then you can see all of the DCC fitting, which appears to take place inside the coal bunker around that area. And there's a bit about body removal as well. So I will go into that later on and uh, DCC sound fitting as well. So yeah, this is super modern, that's for sure. Right, come on then, let's see the locomotive. Uh, there are the accessories that the instructions described. So we'll take a look at those first. Are they taped in? Yes. Ah, oh, this is exciting. I don't know why I'm so excited about this one. I think it's because 
It's a model I know, but in a form that I'm not familiar with. So anyway, basic detailing, most of it's still on a sprue, which is interesting. None of it's painted or anything, so that's fair enough. Yeah, all of the parts on the instructions were in there by the looks of it. All right, come on then, let's open this baby up, see what this is like. It, it does feel heavy, I will say. Okay, so there it is, there it is. It's got quite a nice finish to it. Again, I... I believe the body of this Loco is quite an old one. It obviously predates the chassis by quite a long way. And yeah, you can see straight away there's quite a noticeable parting line on the top of the boiler there. I mean, come on, this is a 130 pound model at RRP. So things like that are a little bit out of place, aren't they, <laughs> given that price tag. But here, is the locomotive. And I have to say, this thing looks all right, doesn't it? And it feels pretty good as well. Yeah, it's fairly weighty, although quite clearly there is no die cast on the running plate. And actually for a Backman Loco, this does feel particularly plasticky. Again, that's because the body dates back quite a long way and they didn't tend to do die cast when this was produced. Mm, but they've still charged a lot for it though, haven't they? Anyway, yeah, it looks all right, and obviously the paint job is much more modern, so all of the lining looks pretty excellent. Anyway, a little bit of history on the V3 then, as I promised you, and then we'll take a much closer look at this and see the ins and outs of it. The Class V3 was designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. Yes, I didn't mention that already. It is a classic Gresley design. They were introduced back in 1939, and the Class was largely identical to the Class V1, which was a slightly earlier design by about 10 years with a lower boiler pressure. Most of which, as I said earlier on, were rebuilt into the V3, which had the higher boiler pressure and therefore a high attractive effort too. Both of the classes were three-cylinder designs and they were used extensively on suburban services. 82 V1 locomotives were built in total, as well as an additional 10 V3s which were built during the same time the V1s were upgraded. Very sadly, none of these were preserved. All examples were scrapped, although there was talk about a brand new replica being produced at some point. Not heard much about that recently though, but fingers crossed that's still going on. Okay, let's have a close look at the model. So unfortunately, this really is another one of Backman's rip-offs, in my opinion, because the model sadly just does not have the finesse and the level of detail required to justify even the heavily reduced price of 90 to 100 pounds, let alone the staggering RRP of 129 pounds 95. And this is a crying shame because a model like this absolutely does have a place in this hobby as a low cost beginner's model, which looks good and does the job, but doesn't cost the earth. But of course, Backman have spoiled that by perhaps being a little bit too greedy and charging this much. So, you know, if a beginner's got to spend that kind of money, they might as well get something decent rather than this really aging locomotive. So let me walk you through some of the features or lack thereof on this locomotive. I'll show you the stuff I've talked about already. So here's a closer look at that very noticeable parting line across the top of the boiler. Yeah, that doesn't look the best, does it? And then of course you do have the plastic running plate here, which isn't a huge problem on this model because I think the weight is quite reasonable. It comes in at 278 grams, so it's not terrible, even though it is lighter than Backman's old V3, which weighed in at 313 grams. But still, you know, when you're paying that sort of money, I don't think a little bit of metal work would be too much to ask. I would call the bodywork of the locomotive very, very low resolution. So if you look at all of the handrails, all of the little holders that secure the handrails, they're all very, very large and chunky, which puts me in mind of an old 1990s locomotive. Look at the detail on the smoke box door. It's again, it's very large scale almost, isn't it? The handrail there is so big, it appears to be sort of sagging downwards. The details seem to be quite big and thick. Same with the lamp irons and such above the front buffer beam. They're quite large, aren't they? And they don't seem to be fitted in a particularly realistic way. Same goes on the back. They just seem to be like bars of metal that are bent round underneath the body to look like lamp irons. Can you see what I mean about there just being no finesse to the model? It's a real pity. The tooling of the body is definitely starting to show its age as well. On top of the dome, you've got a bit of a bizarre texture coming through and there are other areas which are not produced quite so nicely, such as around the coal bunker and on the front of the running plate, you can see noticeable flashing there. 
The cab has absolutely zero detail whatsoever. As you can see, it's just a completely flat surface in there. It doesn't even have any molded detail and obviously nothing painted inside there. So it's very, very basic indeed. The coal appears to be non-removable and it fills the bunker right to the top and some bits of it actually extend over the top. So you can't just put your own crushed coal on top of that. And then you can see the cab roof detailing is very, very basic and quite coarse like the rest of it as well. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine paying 130 quid and getting this? <laughs> it's just crazy, isn't it? Come on, Backman, sort it out, guys. Although I can't see this listed on the website in 2021, so hopefully they've withdrawn this model and put the tools in the bin, particularly if they're not willing to sell the thing at a reasonable cost. Okay, so there are a few good things about the model. I mean, the decoration, even though it's a little bit like putting lipstick on a pig, it has been done nicely. The lining is certainly much more accurate than on my older Backman V2, which is something, isn't it? And the side of the tanks, particularly the sides of the tanks and the coal bunker, are done very, very well because that's a completely flat surface. So all of the sort of lining and such, the early British Railways crest too, done to a very, very high standard. It looks very good and modern. And so does the running number, of course, on the back of the coal bunker there. So that's all right. You do have a couple of metal safety valves here, and that is not an upgrade. That is true of the old Backman V3 as well, but it's good to see that level of detail has been carried over. And the whistle, I believe, might be an upgrade because the old V3s had like a plastic looking whistle. I think this one might actually be metal. So that is one feature that I do like about this model. The chassis does look more modern than the Loco, obviously because it is and it's been designed more recently, but there is actually a little bit of fine detail under there, uh, which again is a bit pointless given how basic the body is, but it's nice to see it. The wheels are now cast wheels and they have been blackened, albeit quite badly. You can see the uh, shiny metal just coming through on the edges there. Of course, they haven't got age as an excuse to save them on that one because the chassis is obviously a lot more modern. It does have sprung buffers, metal separately fitted sprung buffers. There you have it. That again is not an upgrade. That was the case on the old V3 as well. Quite an impressive feature on such an early loco. And I believe the couplings are NEM couplings. If I flip this over, yep, you can see we do have NEM pockets which are filled with couplings on both the front and back. So that's pretty good to see. Okay, so I think that just about sums it up. Very basic model, the detailing is very, very coarse. And of course, the finesse in the molding of the body that you would want for 100 or even 130 pounds is just not there, which is a great pity. But I had a feeling that that would be the case because clearly the body dates back quite a long way. However, since the chassis is much more modern, I'm hoping I will be much more impressed with that. And hopefully the quality of the mechanism will be able to redeem the loco very slightly and we might be able to give it a decent-ish score. Okay, let's take a look. So I may not have been a huge fan of this locomotive's appearance, but I'm a huge fan of its chassis and mechanism. Like seriously, it's really, really good. Like better than the vast majority of Vakman's range good. Yeah, it beggars belief really. So we've got wiper pickups on all six of the driving wheels. Can't fault that, that's very good. The base keeper plate is very easy to remove for maintenance purposes. The brake rigging is fitted, but it's not in the way. You can remove the base keeper plate because it's fitted with spring-loaded contacts, which again makes serviceability very, very easy. We do have turned metal bearings on the axles or the driving axles. How many of Backman's very expensive locos don't have those? Well, this one does, even though it's a very old, horrible looking thing. It's got one driven axle, that is the center wheel set. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. And here is the chassis, which is a die cast metal chassis, and it's where most of the weight comes from. I'm 90% sure that this motor is a five pole motor. How amazing is that? Five pole motor, no flywheel or anything. That's the one slight downside, but that's not a big deal. And then you've got the very modern next generation 18 pin DCC socket. And look on the circuit board, there is even a couple of LEDs labeled on there. Now this loco doesn't have any LEDs fitted to it, but if you wanted to fit sort of lights to the lamps or perhaps the firebox or something, you've got the pads on the circuit board. So it'd be very easy just to solder those in and then presumably the decoder would be able to control them. That's really good. And the gauge was pretty much perfect as well. I measured 14.4 and 14.5 mil back-to-backs on each of the driving axles, 
which is absolutely fine. So yes, go figure, this aging and slightly hideous locomotive body has one of the greatest chassis in Backman's entire range that they've produced from the last 10 or 15 years or so. It makes absolutely no sense, but at last I am starting to get what I paid for with this locomotive. And if only Backman would update some of their other lovely locos to have a similar quality chassis, mm, maybe pigs can fly, but all of that is in theory. For all I know, this could still be a dog because I haven't run it yet. So, set it to forwards, or oh, it's already forwards. Uh, it hasn't been running, obviously, so this might not be at its best, but straight out of the box, Let's find out how this is going to perform. Oh, I'm looking forward to this now. Come on, be good. Please be good. There's the crawl. And actually, you know, because that's a five-pole motor, and hopefully it's a good quality one, there's not too much cogging there. A bit more. Uh, is it cut out? Let's try going backwards. This should all get a lot better as it runs in. Let's go at 50% speed. Oh. So nice. You know what? Having the proper bearings in there really does quieten down a Backman Loco. I'm used to Backman Locos clanking along, particularly with the ones I've reviewed this year, the 9F, the 280s, the Jinty. None of those had proper bearings in them and they were very, very noisy. Let me get close so that you can hear the sound. It's quite a nice sounding purr. You hear that? Now, if a loco sounds bad, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Everything can be all right. But if it sounds quiet, mentally, you just feel far more at ease with a loco. You just think, yeah, that's a quality mechanism. And the sound is what signifies that. Yeah, that is really, really nice. And of course it is, because it's a quality mechanism. And models like this prove that Backman can do it. They can. Oh, shall we just do this all day? Look at that. Oh, that is unbelievably smooth, isn't it? Okay, right, so it doesn't need saying, but I'm gonna say it. Obviously, this is a massive improvement over the previous split chassis mechanism. Like, hands down, every aspect of it, far better, yes. And I'll run that one in a minute for you. Right, let's try that crawl then, now that it has uh, a little bit of warming up under its belt. Come on, okay. So it's not very consistent, that's what I would say. It does seem to be stalling a little bit, but there's room for that to improve as it runs in. And as you can see, that is pretty good now, but it does keep stalling. <laughs> so hopefully that will go away. Let's run in, let's hope that it handles all of my curves okay. Here we go. Okay, well that's the worst of them over, the S-Bend, yeah. It is absolutely fine. What a breath of fresh air. What a beautiful, beautiful runner. Such a pity then that they didn't redesign the body to have a bit more finesse and a bit more detail because if they had for 130 quid, this would have been a far, far better model actually. Yeah, what a gorgeous chassis. Come on Backman, retool the body and you've got a fantastic 2021 standard model on your hands. Right, well I'm gonna enjoy this very much for the next hour and then We'll try it with some coaches. Okay, folks, I am back. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm still absolutely shocked that such a basic loco has such a fantastic chassis. But yeah, it really is fantastic. Fantastic is the word. Um, very stable, no derailments, no clicking over curves, no pony wheels looking like they're gonna derail, no slowing down, nothing. It's just really, really consistent absolutely spot on just what you want when you've spent a lot of money on a locomotive. The pulling power was great, 0.42 newtons, that is more than a Hornby A4, so I think that's pretty good going, and well, these five coaches are not even going to be testing the loco's abilities, even though that would probably be a sizable train for a loco like this, which means that this good old loco will probably be able to haul a train like that up a hill or whatever. Yeah, really, really good. For now, though, let's see what the performance is like after running in has completed. It's done 30 minutes in each direction. Oh, yes, that's what you need. You see, that's what every loco should do. There's no excuse for any loco not to crawl as well as that. Come on. Ooh, bit of a stick there. 
That's what happens a lot, doesn't it? I'm praising a logo and then it shows itself up. Come on, try that again. We know you can do better. Yeah, it's pretty good. We've seen slightly better crawls, but I reckon I would still give it five stars because it's, I mean, particularly at a higher speed. Let's go for that sort of speed. Oh, it just really is convincing, isn't it? Really, really good. And I will send it over the express points, even though it's going out of shot. Yep. No problem. No problem whatsoever. So it's a great, great runner. So with that, let's go and couple to the coaches and see how it runs with a train. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's just so controllable. Particularly in reverse, actually, which I suppose is quite good for coupling up to stuff. <laughs> and there we go. Look at that. It's got some torque there, hasn't it? Holding a train of five at very, very low speed. Right. Go on, hit it. Let's go up. Like 40, I think 40 looks good. Stunning. So on the middle line, I'm going to be running my other Backman V3, and this is the old one I was talking about, and the one I showed at the start, uh, with the old split chassis mechanism. Same body though, the number of changes on the body are surprisingly small, and it's a very wobbly, hesitant runner, and if you're familiar with the split chassis mechanisms, that won't come as a surprise to you. But yeah, it's nice looking, but the paintwork isn't as good on this, and obviously the mechanism just pales in comparison to the latest one. I would love to put this body onto the new chassis, actually, and I reckon I might be able to do that, although I'd be stuck with the, the black wheels of the new chassis. But yeah, anyway, I've coaxed it into running, so just about, <laughs> it's okay. And then on the inside line, you've got uh, Thompson's answer to the V3, I suppose. Uh, this is a Hornby model, obviously, and it's much more finessed than Backman's because, uh, yeah, they, they didn't use a body from many, many years ago. Uh, but yeah, that one's a good runner as well. The theme of today is LNER tank engines, so see which ones you can spot, comment them down below, and see if you can spot an odd one out. So obviously, this is very expensive, really, for what it is. However, you do get what you pay for in at least one area, and that is the performance. So, yeah, I'm not sure I could one, well, I couldn't wholeheartedly recommend this, but it's not like a complete dead loss because the mechanism, the performance, absolutely top notch. And yeah, from any sort of distance, the loco does look fantastic. But then again, when you pay that much, you want your models to look good up close as well. Maybe you don't, I don't know, and if that isn't you, then this is probably a good model to buy because it's certainly a little bit less fragile than other more detailed ones because, well, there isn't that much detail on it. But overall, it is what it is. Uh, do let me know down in the comments what you think. Overall, I would say I am sorry for calling it a hideous locomotive because it is amazing how much great performance can redeem an otherwise fairly unimpressive model. Let's have some ratings then for the latest Backman V3 locomotive. And besides the detail category, it's actually looking half decent, isn't it? It's quite a pleasant surprise. But no, we've got to be objective. The level of detail is definitely a two star. This body is very outdated and it shows it. So you've got the really poor quality molding, which actually lets it down quite a lot. You've got no cab detail, very coarse detailing, and quite a few details which are just molded, which for these days and for this amount of money you'd want separately fitted that goes for the smoke box dart etc etc the performance though can be nothing less than five star overall really really good performance the crawl is very very solid we have seen slightly better crawlers but i think that would be nitpicking particularly if i was to pull the score down for it very very good stable running even over the second radius curves whatever you throw at it very very good runner indeed smooth it's particularly quiet really really good performance and the pulling power is quite remarkable as well for a loco that is reasonably lightweight, obviously with just the plastic running plate. So yeah, attractive effort, 0.42 newtons. That should equate to around 26 coaches, which is actually more than the Hornby A4 and A3. So it's pretty good going actually, very, very impressive. So we can say that this loco is very well balanced and that the pony wheels are not taking too much of the weight, which is very good. The mechanism, again, really, really good mechanism. Incredibly serviceable, 
lots of pickups, proper bearings, five pole motor, nice and easy DCC fitting facilities. I've only not given it five star because it doesn't have a flywheel, but yeah, I've only knocked off half a star for that because it's not a big deal and the cogging isn't actually too bad in the performance. So yeah, very, very good mechanism. The quality then is let down a little bit by the poor quality molding, the flashing and such on the bodywork and also of course the plastic. I mean, this is a good puller with the plastic running plate. Can you imagine what it would do with a metal one? And of course, I paid for that level of quality, so it is a pity that I didn't get it. And certainly with an RRP of £129.95, you want as many features as you possibly can. Value for money then. Now, £129.95 suddenly isn't sounding as bad as I thought it was going to. If this loco had a mechanism to match the vast majority of Backman's other mechanisms I've looked at this year, then certainly I would be absolutely slating it for being so expensive. But for 90 to 100 pounds, which is around what some, well, the decent retailers seem to be selling it for, and there's a couple out there selling for the RRP, it's not terrible. Now, it's not great either because it's a very basic and outdated loco, as I keep saying, but for this level of quality in the mechanism and the performance, there is some value to that, isn't there? So I've given it three and a half stars. It's okay, it's not terrible. I would draw your attention to the Oxford J27, which is another loco that I've looked at recently. I mean, that had a good mechanism as well, but it also had good detail to match. It had a tender and it had all of the die cast and it was cheaper. So yeah, I do think I'm justified in giving 3.5 to the value there. Overall then, that is a total score of 7.28 out of 10. Into the logbook it goes. There it is, 17th, just above the Hornby Q6 and below the Hornby A4. Now, I don't think that's too bad for a loco that's got such a horribly outdated body. That's quite impressive. So, yeah, not terrible. If you can find one for the right price, I would certainly recommend it, but don't expect a super detailed or super modern loco. Well, folks, thank you very, very much for watching. The first half went about as I expected it to go but the second half was a very, very pleasant surprise indeed, so I'm glad I could bring you along for that. Uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, that one was quite interesting for the reason I've just described, so I did enjoy it, and I am now enjoying the Loco, now that it's working very, very nicely indeed. Uh, so I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, again, thank you for watching, thank you for your time, thank you for your company, and I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right, look after yourselves, folks. Cheers, everybody.